Hello everybody and thank you for joining. This is your host Nino and in today's video I am inviting you to review with me Jammy Pop, a variant of Puppy Linux running on the machine which customarily runs my Windows XP. As I have said previously XP is entirely unharmed by these experiments as they occur on a separate hard disk. And I have previously mentioned Jemmy Pup 32 as a pos possible example of a really lightweight Linux. And to give you an idea, its ISO file, like the thing I burned on the DVD with which I booted the whole thing, is around 300 megabyte. As opposed to the other Linuxes I tried, that's Linux Lite and Absolute Linux, whose image size was over two and a half gigabyte each. And this small size frankly shows. The first thing I know that I'm paying with <laughs> is the lack of firmware and hence the non-recognition of my otherwise hyper compatible wireless net adapter. Like I'm having normally this, uh, what's it called? such a TP-Link adapter basically and, and that works and has been working with Linux for an absolute eternity. Yeah, WN77, no, WN, this is a model TL-WN722N. So that's a nice, uh, you can see here the name. So that's a really nice wireless adapters, very, very compatible with Linux, but not puppy because, you know, who needs firmware? We need to save space. So the, one of the first things I would be doing here is trying to get firmware in order to get my wireless adapter back. And if we look at the pre-installed in applications, you will see this thing I mentioned previously that if you take a too small distribution, and I think this is too small, then you will be seeing weird programs installed and you will nevertheless have to install the ones you know. Fun is Sudoku and something else. Okay, so that's okay. Then multimedia, lots of entries, maybe two usable ones, right? Maybe three. So there is, MPV. I have no idea what the celluloid, maybe that's some sort of media player. But instead of having one VLC, which is going to handle everything, we're having a bazillion smaller programs, none of which are better than VLC. And one really asks oneself, why not ditch all of them and just have one VLC? And down there, of course, we're having <laughs> the obligatory DVD burning applications because... There are a lot of people nowadays still using DVDs. I gave one as a gift once and the gifted person told me, uh, well, you know what? I actually first had to get a player because basically nobody owns that anymore. Then we're having the internet. So we are having here transmission for torrents, which is good. And we are having Sylphid, an actually decent uh, email client. And we're having the light web browser, which is a Mozilla Firefox derivative in version 48. And then we're having the option to get a web browser because you see the makers of Puppy apparently have foreseen that none of this is going to be hyper satisfactory. And then we're having Puppy phone, God knows what that is, maybe something for dial up and GFTP, which is also very, very lovely. Uh, in case we want to access an FTP server. I think they could also have thrown in something for Gopher. So if we turn on the light web browser, it is rather decent. So if we go to, yeah, well, where, where can I go? Let's again go for CNN.com. Haven't been there, I believe yet. When I install it, I expect that this should be faster, but <laughs> yeah, to play the video, you will need to install the video codecs. Learn how. 
do I want to learn how? I don't want to learn how. I want a Tobedo place. So, okay, learn how. Oh god, Source Forge. So, <laughs> great. I mean, maybe maybe that will save on bandwidth. You know, maybe that's not all negative. I can, generally speaking, read whatever I want to, but I'm apparently somewhat limited in the multimedia, in the light browser, which is why I will need to install another browser, right? Okay, now, that was the internet. Let's look at personal... What What is a DDV key? What is PP log? Why do I need any of these? Also, personal organizer, one has seen time and again, but the rest is just a weird choice. Business contains numeric, which is separate from document, which contains Abbey word. Normally, these are both in one option, which is called office, because the one is the, the spreadsheet and the other one is the word processing software like this one i'm actually fond of abby word i like it and then graphic there's no gimp but weirdly there is inkscape then we are having some pz glue image joiner yeah we totally need that very often <laughs> we have empty paint which is fine and we're having inkscape but again lots of sort of Lovely little weirdo programs. And so on and so forth. I mean, there is a decent terminal. At least it's not just X term as it was in absolute Linux. But I think it is obvious by now that whatever we do, in order to make this truly usable, we will need to install a couple of programs. We cannot just leave it at that. And so, and I'm dedicating that to my wonderful friend and godfather, Todor, because he was very interested in, in Puppy Linux. Let's go maybe forward to installing it. <laughs> well knowing that this is not going to remain so small. So if you really want a small Linux, one with such a weird software choice will in the end lead you to just increase and increase it. Where could the installer be? I don't know because I'm not an expert in Puppy, but here we're having something called Puppy Installer. Very good. We're having something called Frugal Pup. Install and manage installs, the recommended option. Totally not, we want a real one. And Installer which does not support UEFI. Well, if you're going to go for Puppy Linux, maybe the machine just has BIOS. And now, do you want to do this on a USB? Nope. Or on an internal hard drive? Yes, please. Yeah, that is the drive. Uh, notice the file system and intended destination. Is that what you want? In particular, if the file system is VFAT or NTFS, you might want to replace these with a Linux file system. You know what? I totally want to get rid of it. This is a previous Linux installation. So let's open Gparted. Oh, I know what Gparted is. And we're going to... Oopsie. Close. Format 2, X4. Let's just do that. Apply. Apply. All right. We have now formatted the X4 partition. And now it should be usable simply by Puppy Linux. I hope it will see and be able to use the swap. <sighs> so, all right. Going back to that thing. Install Puppy on SDA1. Yes. You have chosen 
Fernstal Puppy, which is an XT4 file system, and the size is 458 gigabyte. Press OK to install Puppy. Note, there will be one or more dialog windows before you have to commit to the actual install. Oh my gosh, against my fear of commitment. Uh, unique name for the folder. Puppy is going to be installed to partition SDA1, which is currently mounted on path mount SDA1. As this will be a frugal install, you can choose what is a frugal installer was this, this again this USB stick type thing you can choose to place puppy files in a folder this is very convenient if you want to have more than one installation of puppy no even if you have if, even if you only have one installation it may be good to have all the puppy files in their own folder and so not causing any potential conflicts with other files at the top level for instance, a pre-existing full Linux may install may have whatever top level. No, you know what? We are just going to go for the top level. We're going to put it like that under the root directory. What will happen then? So now I'm waiting for it to copy files. I mean, that's sweet. It should be just 300 megabyte though. Or maybe somewhat more if they are not compressed. And I now have the option to install a bootloader named Grub for DOS. It is a very simple exercise and will find all of my previous Windows and Linux installations and create a simple boot menu so I can choose which operating system to boot at power on. Look man, this is a puppy only machine. All right, search within only this device. And ah, I cannot click options. <laughs> oh, I can click options. Okay. Very good. And then I say, okay. And here Windows, the first entry is always shown regardless Windows are installed or not. <laughs> windows are installed, yes my flat has Windows. I'm keeping the entry but this is still very funny. You can live write each label, I'm not live writing the label, I'm fine with the label. Press OK to install, yes. I don't want to handle any old MBA, I'll just press OK. Now there is some text file popping up, but I don't need it so I can close it. OK, all done. Ah, very good. Well, in that case, I will want to reboot. Uh, you, you can save the session and all the settings and personal data created so far. I don't want to save the session. No, I just want it to, to reboot like right now. So, Jemmy Pop is now shutting down. And we're booting and then trying to get the DVD out in time so it doesn't boot from it. The DVD itself has a very small written area because it's just 300 megabyte. Yeah, I could have taken maybe a CD, but 
<laughs> no, I didn't have anything like it. Ah, yes, sorry. My mistake, I had again turned off the hard disk from booting. All right, we're back in the game. Shall we be booting Puppy? Yes, please. Boot Puppy. Oh, we get the video driver on. That That's nice. And you see, this is something which it decisively did better than uh, Linux Lite, actually, where the network interface was, was stopping everything for five minutes because it was somehow not recognizing it and letting everybody wait for it. No, my man, you handle that in the background. That That's the right way to handle that. So, I'm getting something faint like a menu, and I am in Puppy Linux. No, I'm not in Hong Kong. Why would I be? Oh, yes, right, I have to pick my time zone which would be Europe Vienna right now and the keyboard I'm going to keep it English time from internet yes please host name yeah I'm fine with that and to run internet apps a spot so apparently there is some more harmless user bah Just, we'll just run everything as it is supposed to be run. Yes, synchronize it each time at the system startup. Time shop shall be synchronized, yes. And boom, two hours of my life are gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, synchronize at each system. Start up. Okay, very good. Out of here. Welcome. This is the first time you are running Jammy Pub 32. Internet connection. Congratulations. You seem to be connected to the internet. Experiment with mouse over, left click, and right click on the network icon in the tray. Okay, I will. If you need to reconfigure the internet connection. Want to update a uh, video driver? Yes, uh, uh, I think a wireless driver would be really nice. So this thing, okay. And I need help than the help menu when nobody will hear your screams. Some things to note about this UPUB system. Jammy Jellyfish will be supported till April 27. Well, well, Couple of years to go. Kernel is built without firmware. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. That's exactly why I don't have wireless. I can get. Uh, ah, yes, the ADRV, the ADRV web browser. Hmm? Here you see the names better, maybe. Should be. Should be replaced or augmented by a heavyweight browser in many scenarios, like, definitely. FDRV firmware, yeah, we want that. The DevX development tools, okay. And here you're having that large dependencies are not included. Okay, what else do you want to tell me? System updates. Yeah, this thing with the Delta files, I'll just never ever do. There are Delta files which you can create and use for system updates. I will never do that. Okay. 
So, what do I want to do? <laughs> Language, startup, mouse, keyboard, sound, desktop, printer, internet, date, time. Do we see, however... Okay, so this is for GWM. I do like GWM, actually, normally. It is a very, very lean window manager. So I'm not 100% sure how I'm handling that. And maybe I just want to install applications. Load and unload SFS packages. Choose an SFS file from the official repo. Yes. Also, I want to get a better browser. Hmm, where was that? Here, get web browser. Okay, I'm trying. You must create a puppy save area before using this tool. I have installed to hard disk, what's the issue? Okay, more configurations found in the desktop and setup menu. Desktop menu, okay. And you see it already starts to be mega weird in the reality. So Windows, Menu, Shortcuts, Desktop, Item, what? And where's the Setup menu? There's no Setup menu, there's a Startup menu. But here, again, are some SFS files mentioned somehow. You see him running Puppy without pup save. That you can load extra SFS files for temporary use. May disappear the next boot. Where? What is pub save? Okay, I'll need to Google this. There doesn't seem to be very clear guidance on that. Uh, load SFS. Load. Hmm. And I'm supposed to have already have gotten it. Okay. Modules. Aha! So these must be the drivers, which just never work. And then the swap file. Great. So it does not immediately take my swap file from, like my swap partition from Linux. Now, if this is the setup, what other setup can I have? So this is the utility menu, maybe here. Pub save backup. Ha! So there is something about pub save. But if we don't know actually. System. Pub sys info. Boot manager. Okay, let's go there. Makes a backup copy of the pub save file or folder. Wait a minute. Haha. <laughs> Is that me having put in there top root as the pub save folder? <laughs> oh. Ouch. Maybe I should have gone with the defaults simply, huh? Quick setup. Let's try. I'm gonna go crazy. So, not it either. SFS load, package manager, also. I have no idea how to create a pub save file so far. All right, now I got somewhere in some pub control thing, an option to resize my pub save file, but I got the message that I'm having a save folder and that there's no need to resize it. But that means in turn that I can't install a web browser from here because it insists on a pub save file 
Boy, is this super annoying. So... Great! Uh, software, maybe. Package Manager. Install and uninstall apl applications. SFS get, yes? This SFS thing seems to be some sort of puppy packages. Are you operational? Are you doing anything? Package manager, maybe? Continue to PPM. Oh, we have a package manager. That That's good. But do I have a browser? Well... So there is some cute browser and and Chromium. Maybe that will be my my way out of this madness. Do it. Um, yeah. How how do I mark it for installation or anything, or just do it? So I have the feeling it is doing it, but unfortunately these packages are not available, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I get it. I may need to first reload here everything. Press enter, I do. And it now may be updating its packages repository. Great. Let me return to that SFS offer. Is there anything going to work here? SFS get. Get LibreOffice. And the Slackware repository belonging to Alien Bob might contain my, my LibreOffice installation. Thank you, random, random gnome in the forest. This, this is really like an adventure game more than a Linux distribution. Advice on installing web browsers. Frozen, of course. Package manager is frozen. And whatever that is is like this this thing is also frozen very good so i now picked to use light as my default web browser hmm? light yagami huh <laughs> let's see whether ryuk will appear and handle me after this whole linux install has gotten me enough now I can get here apparently some SFS and PET. Very good. And I want to have this SFS. This file is not existing. Yay. Let's go for a lower version then. I would like the SFS. But the file is not present. <laughs> I mean, do you now realize what I mean when I'm telling you be careful if the if the distribution is too small then this will just not be worth it. LibreOffice Puppy Linux SFS Alle Applin and so this is from 2022. This might be correct. And in a completely different place, we are finding something called custom LibreOffice for 
E i386 and AMD 64. I'm going to go for the 32-bit one. All right. I'm tired of this nonsense and I declare it a failure. I wanted to install something as complex as Midnight Commander. That is the simplest, most natural console based thing right here. But no, it won't do that. Won't have it. Why not? Well, HTTP respawn uh, request sent waiting. Awaiting a response and awaiting a response already for something like 10 minutes and that's it. I do have an internet connection. I am pinging right now google.com. I don't have a DNS issue, nothing. It's just it's just hanging and I must say uh, I'm not having this anymore. Puppy Linux therefore has been so far the worst experience. And I can not recommend it for installation on older computers. And while this is a disappointing end to today's episode, such it is, and I am unwilling to fake anything about it. This has been a way more complex experience beginning till end than I would have expected it to be. Nothing worked, everything is out of date, and... I advise you to not waste your time on this. With that, thank you once again for having joined today. See you next time, and from me, goodbye.